Bridget Children fell on Wall Street. And with that, another hour of Yahoo Finance Live begins. Rachel Akufo, Brad Smith, Dave Briggs. Let's break down the market action with our panel. Randy Frederick, Managing Director of Trading and Derivatives for the Schwab Center of Financial Research, and Tim Pagliari, Chief Investment Officer of Cap Wealth. Nice to see you all. Tim, we'll start with you and your broad takeaways from the market action. I think investors are shrugging off higher interest rates and uh, positive news uh, abroad on the geopolitical um, side is, is really helped. And I, I believe that, that uh, it looks positive going forward, certainly for stock investors and the inflation protection that they're looking for. And Randy, are they overly positive at this point, or is the worst behind them now that we do have a sense of where the Fed is headed and a sort of, a, even though we don't know how long the conflict in Russia and Ukraine is going to last, at least a sense that things are at least moving at the same pace? Yeah, it's difficult to say, but it's been a pretty remarkable run. I mean, the S&P 500 has gone up now nine out of the last 11 sessions. It's up nearly 11 percent. We've got volatility at a 10-week low um, when the when the conflict between Russia and Ukraine began, it sort of created this coiled spring effect in the markets. And really, the, the economic fundamentals are very, very good. With the exception of inflation, everything else in the economy looks really, really good. The labor market's in great shape, and we're going to get more data on that on Friday of this week. We've had five consecutive – we've had four out of the last five weeks. We've had weekly jobless claims go down. So, I frank, frankly, we're going to have some pretty good numbers there. So, Yes, the market is sort of cheering without a resolution, but when you have a, an attack or a panic or a crisis, eventually people just kind of realize that, okay, this is the new norm, we have to adjust to it. And I think, frankly, that's what's going on. Let's stay with you for a hot second, Ryan, because when we think about the consumers right now, separate from the investor and how their own sentiment may look across where prices are higher right now, where mm -hmm. they're anticipating even going into a highly anticipated summer travel season to be above 2021 levels, still we're going to be tracking this now against year over three type of metrics from 2019. And so what is the anticipation there and how consumer spending will play into the broader or continued economic recovery, which has sputtered to this point due to many things such as international conflicts, such as some of the COVID variants as well, that have hampered some of the expectations even for 2023 or 2022. Well, I think what's fascinating is that when you look at some of the consumer sentiment gauges, they're terrible. And it basically means people are not feeling good about inflation and are complaining about inflation. But yeah, when you look at the behavioral measures, retail sales, income, spending, travel, all of that, it shows that people are still spending, people are still buying things, they're still traveling, they're still doing all the things, they're just complaining a lot more about it because it costs more, but it shows the strength of the consumer. The fiscal stimulus package that were packages that were put into place when COVID hit are still having a positive effect by creating enormous amounts of capital. People are feeling wealthier than they ever have, even if they're complaining about it more. So again, it shows the resilience of the consumer right now. And, Ultimately, consumers drive to more than two-thirds, 70-some percent of the economy, and I think we're going to continue to see that. And Tim, the market's shrugging off all the things you mentioned and Brad mentioned, but what about the yield curve, typically a pretty good indicator of a looming recession, and now that parts of it are inverting, how concerned are you? I think it's definitely something to watch. You know, the two-year Treasury has gone from 1.65 percent to 2.33 plus percent in less than three weeks. And ordinarily, that would have a tremendous impact on the markets, but they've shrugged it off at this point. They're not looking forward as a recession. And yet, it's been a pretty good indicator for a long time um, as a predictive model of a recession somewhere out into the future here. So, Randy, with that in mind, obviously, this is a very forward-looking um, view that this uh, inverted yield curve gives us. How should people be positioning their portfolios in advance of that? Well, I think an important key factor here is that, yes, the yield curve inverting has often been a good indicator of, of a recession, but typically it's at least 18 to 24 months into the future. And we've also had inversions that did not result in a recession. So it's not perfect like anything else. 
what people should be doing to uh, position their portfolios. And we were talking about this when the market was depressed quite a bit just a few weeks ago is take these opportunities when the market pulls back to adjust your portfolio to make sure that you are well diversified. Our overall outlook is that you should be positioned um, neutral with the market right now, not overly exposed in any specific area, but take opportunities when you have dips in the market to pick up some of those shares of stocks and companies that you think are quality that you want to add to. And when you get these sharp rallies like we've had over the last two weeks, that's when you trim some that are a little bit outperforming and to keep your balance in line with your long-term um, your long-term uh, asset allocation. You should essentially be right at target right now. We're going to be talking about semiconductors in a moment, and particularly here, one of the areas that you're seeing opportunity in is the semiconductor value chain with a tailwind of increasing demand. Walk us a little bit further into that, Tim, and the thesis behind that. Well, there's a, there's a number of factors. The first is the geopolitical instability, the supply chain, and the realization that we're very vulnerable. Uh, they've been said cars of the future are essentially going to be tires with chips. And so you've seen Intel and a variety of companies have made big investments and have committed to even bigger investments over the next five to 10 years, upwards of in excess of over $200 billion. So I think that is a great sector, especially for conservative investors looking for dividends. Intel's a great pick. And I think that the momentum of, of bringing it back home, producing in America, it, it has a new element to it, different than what we've seen you know, in, in the past. It's now a national security issue. And let's stay there with you, Randy, and wrap this up. Specific picks that you like moving forward. You mentioned the general conditions you're looking for. Any specifics? Uh, well, I can't give you a specific stock names. As I mentioned, all of our sector outlooks are basically at neutral right now. And part of the reason for that is because making predictions in an environment where you've got this massive exogenous event going on between Russia and Ukraine is really kind of foolish. No one really knows when it will be resolved. It could be resolved in a week. It might last another 12 months. When those types of environments are out there, you can't look at basic fundamentals and you can't look at technicals and all the things that you normally look at because there's such an enormous sort of outsized event outside of that that's causing problems. So our overall outlook is, again, very much neutral across the board until we get some clarity on this issue. Hopefully it won't last that long, um, but right now it's kind of dangerous to make any big wholesale changes. So that's why we say stay pretty neutral right now. Just use very small tweaks around the edges to keep yourself at your target allocation. Much appreciation here for the time from our market panel today. Randy Frederick, who is the Managing Director of Trading and Derivatives over at the Charles Schwab Center for Financial Research, as well as Tim Pagliara, who is the Chief Investment Officer over at Capwell. Thanks so much.